sisters. Uh, my name is Ellie. Uh, I'm here to share a testimony about the depression that I went through from the end of 2010 to 2011. Um, in 2008, uh, I graduated and uh, that was when the economy was really going bad. But thankfully, um, I was able to get a job in Arizona. Um, it was a staffing agency and back then I didn't know what a staffing agency was. So anyway, um, I flew to Arizona, I got there and, uh, oof, not only did I understand what a staffing agency was, but I also understood that it was not legit. Uh, staffing agency. Uh, why? Because they would make us lie uh, about our resumes. So, for example, <clears throat> we would lie about uh, our experiences, the years of experience. We would lie about uh, the places that we work out, and I was not comfortable with it. So, um, I think I spent like three months there, and then I had to quit because, like I said, I was not comfortable. So um, I had to move back home. I mean, I didn't want to, but I didn't have money. I didn't have anything. So uh, I moved back home. Um, I stayed with my parents for, uh, I believe, one year. And during that time, I was looking for jobs, you know, here and there. Um, nothing was happening. But then, um, one day, a friend of mine uh, who was living in Seattle back then, he told me about a job uh, at Nintendo because he was working there. So he told me um, that I should apply there. So I did. And I flew to Seattle for the interview. The interview went well. And uh, unfortunately for me, it was not uh, a permanent job. It was just a contract. But... I just had to take it because you know I wanted some I wanted to gain some experience you know I wanted to make money and all that stuff uh, the place where I was working at uh, was not a healthy place there was a lot of uh, backstabbings there was uh, just not good people you know I mean I had friends but it wasn't they were not really really good friends you know so um, I stayed there uh, for I think 10 months because they ended my contract before even the due date It was awful anyways, so um, after the contract ended I was really 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 angry um, At God because okay during that time uh, that I was working um, at a Nintendo I Knew it was just a contract. So during that time. I was also looking for jobs, you know within Nintendo and also um, somewhere else, you know, and I was going for interviews, but nothing good came out out of uh, those interviews. So when my uh, contract ended, I was really depressed. You know, I was really mad at God, you know, I was like, God, why things are not happening the way I want them to happen, you know? I guess everybody um, has an agenda. I don't know if I can call it agenda, but we all have a plan in our mind. Like at a certain age, we want to have this kind of a job. We want to settle down. We want to have a permanent job. We want to get married. We want to have a house. We want to have uh, 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 cars and all that stuff, a family. But nothing was happening. And I was like, What's going on? I was really mad. I was really frustrated. And I stopped praying. I stopped going to church. And that was a big, big, big mistake. Um, sisters, never stop praying. Um, I remember uh, a pastor, I heard a pastor said, um, even if you're mad, even if you're angry, even if you don't feel like it, pray, pray, pray. Because for some reason, when I stopped, I was like, I was naked. Why do I say naked? Because I felt like I was not protected. Like, just Satan was just coming in and out. He, he would just do anything. I'm not going to tell you guys uh, exactly what went through, but I could, I could just tell you that it wasn't good. Like, 
evil thoughts were just coming you know in and out so i started having like suicidal thoughts and all that stuff so um one day uh my sister called and i was trying to talk to her but i guess back then she couldn't understand what i was going through and i was also trying to hide uh what i was going through to her and my family as well so i was like um can you help me you know i mean when you don't feel good what do you do you know i was asking questions like that you know um when um god is not answering your prayers what do you do and my sister was like eh, you know god is always good and all that stuff i mean everybody knows that and when you go through that you don't want to hear that you don't want to hear god god is good god loves you and all that you don't want to hear that you know and one time i was just sitting at home you know i i, I stopped eating i was not even eating anymore um i was just sitting at home and i was like oh my goodness this is not the life that i want this is this is not me i mean i don't want to do this anymore you know i'm just going to uh to end my life and then all the trouble will be gone you know so um the next day i went to a park uh, it's a beautiful park it was a beautiful park and they had a river there so um i was like okay so if i'm going to kill myself I would come on this side, I would jump. And so I was planning, you know, I was planning how I was going to end my life and all that stuff. And then I went back home. My mom called me. She said, huh, I had a dream about you, uh, that you were sitting in the dark, you know, you were not doing good. Uh, you it felt like you wanted to kill yourself. And I was like, actually, mom, uh, that's what I'm going through. She's like, what? What's happening? How long? How long have you been feeling like this? And I told her what I was going through. And my mom back then, she was, she's not, you know, African moms. She's not like the one who's going to comfort you and all that stuff. You know, she's going to blame you. Why would you do stuff like that? Why would you do this? Don't you, don't you know you have, you, you have family? Don't you know you have people who care about you? Blah, 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 blah. So, but now she's better, she's better. But by then she was like, nah, you, how could you do that, blah, blah, blah. So she told me, um, she told me um, that I shouldn't do it. I mean, God loves me. God would not want, like, if I kill myself, I will not go to heaven. That's for sure. I will go to hell. Even if, you know, I've been doing good all my, uh, all my life, but... Since you came, you said, you're not going to heaven. You're not going to heaven. So she started praying with me. We started praying together. And then um, a couple of days later, uh, I was on YouTube. I really wanted some messages, like uh, a preaching, like something that was going to lift me up. And I was like, ah, where am I going to find it? I couldn't find it in the Bible. Nobody was going through the same thing that I was going through in the Bible. I couldn't find anything. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to find some sermons that could lift me up. So um, I stumbled upon uh, Joyce Meyer's sermons. And she talked about, she had a series, I think, I believe it was a series uh, on um, the mind how Satan attacked the mind and she 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 calls the mind the battlefield of um, of Satan oh my goodness sisters that was just a relief I felt so good I felt really 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 good and I also um, I also listened to um, T.D. Jakes sermons those were the times when I was listening to T.D. Jakes and just Meyer but uh, the sermon um, by uh, T.D. Jakes was about the friendship that we have. The people around us are supposed to lift us up, you know. They're supposed to bring the best out of us. And I had to step back a little bit, you know, and um, contemplate uh, the people around me. And I realized that I was not surrounded by good people. Like most of my friends were not there. Um, for me, they were not there to uh, to bring 
positive things out of me. They were just, it was just about competition. You know, I have this, I have that. What about you? No, 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 no. At this age, you still, you still, um, you still don't have a job. Look at me, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, mm -mm. I need to stay away from those friends. So, uh, December 2011, yes, I remember it was Dece uh, December 31st of 2011. That's when I got rid of all my friends. Like 90% of my friends, I got rid of them. Um, I just stopped. Well, we talked, but we were not, like, I distanced myself from them. Like, it wasn't the same. The relationship changed. I changed. I changed my relationship with them. And sisters, I can tell you, after I did it, I felt really good. I felt really good because now I was surrounded by the people who cared about me. People who lift me up. Also, um, the next year, um, I visited my, uh, my sister uh, during the summer. And um, I was really amazed by the way she was, uh, she was living her life. I mean, I've never seen a side of her. Maybe, maybe I've, I guess I've never paid attention to it. But she was peaceful. She was happy. She was joyful. And I say to myself, wow, this is what I want. This is the kind of life that I want. I don't want to be worried about tomorrow. Oh, I don't have a job. I don't have a car. You know, I don't have a family. I don't have this and that. I just want to be happy. I just want to be joyful. And, and I thought I had to work at it. But she gave me a book by Francis Chan. She gave me that book. And also, she told me, uh, you don't work at it. I mean, it's just, you have to let the, 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 the Holy Spirit, you know, walk through you. You don't decide today to be, I'm going to be happy. I mean, it's just going to last for, for how long? Uh, for maybe for five, five hours. But you have to let the Spirit live in you, work in you. And that's how you're going to be happy and you're going to enjoy your life. And during that time, sisters, that's when I found about God's love. I know uh, sometimes we say, yeah, God loves us. You know, I love God because he loves me first. But sometimes we just don't um, understand what it means. We don't, we, we don't know what it means. I mean, we just say it because it's in the Bible. It's, uh, because people say it. But during that time, I was able to experience God's love for me. And I knew that if God loves me, he would do everything to work for me. He would make sure that I found the right person, that I get married to the right person, even if it takes longer. If God loves me, is going to give me a decent job that I love. If God loves me, he's going to take care of all my needs. And sisters, I felt really relieved. I said, wow, wow. This is what, God, this is what God's love feels like. And sisters, I can tell you, since 2011, since 2012, I've been living the best of my life. I have no regrets. I made a promise to God that I was never going to complain again. Yes, I do complain here and there, but it's not uh, the way that I used to. It's going to last maybe for uh, a couple of hours, but it, 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 it's not like... Like it used to be, you know, because sometimes I would complain, God, I don't have this. Why don't I have this? Why does my friend have this and I don't have it, you know? But I don't complain anymore. I don't, I don't get angry anymore. Um, no more suicidal thoughts. Uh, depression. The depression is gone. It's gone. And like I said, I've been living the best of my life since 
2011 since 2012 and sister i hope this um testimony um uh, is going to help some of you guys i hope it's going to bring you up lift you up and bring the best out of you thank you sisters